I know it can be hard to find a shampoo and conditioner combo that really caters to your hair type, but Way wants to give you the confidence to live your life your way, especially on your wash day. I love my detox shampoo and I love their hydrating conditioners. I have just felt like my hair has really had a little big bounce back using their products. Wash your way to healthier hair and shampoos and conditioners made just for you. Go to the way T H E O U A I dot com and use code Juicy for fifteen percent off your entire purchase. That's the way T H E O U A I dot com code Juicy. Heather McDonald has got the juicy scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Sigmund serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo, woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, I have so much to get into, but first, let me tell you how much fun I had in Texas. Oh my gosh. Chris Frangiola did all three shows with me. Drake, my son, was a tour manager, and we had a lot of fun. There were some travel mistakes that we made, but it was great. Started out in Houston, in which we made the mistake, or Peter rather, to stay at the Houston a Houston airport. Not not something I suggest. Very depressing. And at that point, Chris had bailed and got his own rent-a-car, which was definitely the right thing to do. So we left. We did the great show in Houston, House of Blues. So fun. And I did some interesting outfits. I wore cowboy boots. I wore a cowboy hat. I like to change it up. A lot of things people talk about, you know, is it hard to be a female comedian? Yeah, actually, I think it's the outfits. I think planning my outfits and hating most of them is been the hardest part of being a female stand-up because guys don't have to worry about that stuff. And I've talked about it when I've interviewed other comedians, female comedians, and we all agree it is really kind of hard to, like, find that uniform. So I'm like, whatever. I love my hat and a cowboy hat, and I love my cowboy boots. And so I did it, and I wore these funky, sparkly outfits, and they seemed to be well-received, or at least people lied to my face. But the thing that was universal is that they loved the stand-up, and I've fallen back in love with doing stand-up, and I'm super excited to do my shows come this fall, which you go to heathermcdonald.net to get those. But so the next day, we were supposed to leave Houston and go to Dallas and stay at another hotel airport. That's when Chris just said, Goodbye. I've gotten to rent a car. I'm I'm on my own. And he went and got a very cute hotel right across from the venue with like cuteness along the way and cute walking around. Now it is very hot. So I I did not understand that part of Texas <laughs> that much, but at least it was cool and air conditioned in the House of Blues. So the House of Blues Dallas show was great. It was sold out. Um And I found these other girls in the meet and greet, and they were so cute, and they were wearing pink, that I was like, I need a photo for myself. And then we went to the foundation room, and they gifted me with a huge bottle of Dom Perignon. Turns out my 21-year-old son does like champagne. He's like, turns out I like champagne. I'm like, oh, because it's Dom. Anyway, so fun. Had a great time. Then we, Chris is on his own. He gets in his car, and he starts going down to Austin for the Saturday show. But... Drake and I go 30 minutes back to the airport hotel, and then we get our room, and then we go. And it wasn't even convenient. By the way, it was not even convenient. It was like, I don't know why uh, Peter thought this was a good idea. It was not. From now on, I'm always going to stay right by the venue so that I can take your recommendations and get my cute coffee and my cute whatever and stay at a nice hotel. These hotels were nice, but I'm not a flight attendant. Okay, I'm not on a layover. I don't know what I did see one interesting thing on a TikTok. There's a TWA and they said it was JFK and it it, this looks so cool. I don't even know if this is real, but I saw a TikTok on it and it is the airport hotel. It's called TWA Airport Hotel inside JFK and it takes you back to like 1960. And and I thought that looked that looked fun. Like if that but still only if you're going to like. Stay one night so that you can get on your flight to Europe. I just don't know why you'd do that. Anyway, 
So Chris wakes up at his cute hotel, gets in his running car, and starts going off to Austin. Drake and I are waiting. We're about to get on the plane at 12. It gets delayed. It gets delayed. It gets delayed. Now, I have a meet and greet at 515, and it's an approximate three-and-a-half-hour drive from the Dallas airport to Austin. So I, I've already checked my back. So I'm wearing, like, a pair of Trina Turk sh- shorts and tennis shoes and a T-shirt, and I'm like, at least I packed my makeup with me. At least I kept my makeup with me because that would have been terrifying. Anyway, I'm like, Drake, we cannot risk this. We we have a huge house at the Paramount Theater. You know, I don't – it was a big number of people that were coming. So I was like, there's no way I can risk this. And the meet and greets at 515. So we get an Uber and – I'm like, hey, if the plane lands, we'll stop by the airport and get my bag. If not, I'm going to wear this and I have like a funny story. At least I have a makeup face. Okay. So on our way in the Uber, we had the joy of stopping at Bucky's. Am I saying it right? Yes. Okay. My editor is from Texas. I thought this was just like a gas station stop place. I had no idea what I've been missing out. When people would talk about, oh, you got to get good barbecue. Oh, Texas barbecue. Oh, I'm like, why is everyone so weird about the barbecue? Like, who cares? Like, we've grown up with a barbecue in our backyard. We would sometimes like, you know, have a burger or do like a barbecue chicken or so. I don't know. I was like, why is it? I go, oh, this is just like pre-made food. What? Why is everyone so like crazy about it? I get this pulled pork sandwich wrapped up in the foil, and it like literally brought tears to my eyes. I was like, now I get it. Now I don't know what they do. I don't know if it's like, you know, being basted for 72 hours straight. I don't know why it tastes so much better than anything I've ever had. <laughs> but, and it's like a huge store, and they have desserts, and they have like groceries. I don't know. They have clothes. I wish I would have bought a Bucky shirt. I guess it's only in Texas. Then as we're leaving, they have all these funny signs that are like, Bucky's giving main character energy. Bucky's, that food really slaps. Bucky's, like really like clever, cute things. Anyway, I just had to say that was just fabulous. So then we get to Austin and I have my last show and we did stay at a very cute Marriott called the Proper, Proper Hotel. I think it's Marriott. Um, Very cute. And, but the heat was... I couldn't believe it. And then when we get out of my show, there is the pride parade happening. I mean, could could Austin be any greater? Like it was like I came out and it was just like people were cheering for me. They really weren't. But I just pretended like they were. So all my people got to then go and enjoy the pride parade after my show because I got out like 845. So we go back to the hotel, have a beautiful dinner and have so much fun. And then the next day we get on these electric bikes from the proper hotel and it's still kind of breezy it's not like scorching hot yet and we ride our bikes around this lake and I am like I get the host I get why everyone left here LA and went to Austin I totally get it Drake was like everyone's a fitness model mom like everybody looked so happy and so healthy and like jogging and running around and then there's all these like Brand new, like very chic, um, like apartment buildings everywhere. I mean, I don't know. I was like, Drake, if you get a job or something and you have an opportunity to move to Austin, maybe you just want to do this as like a young person. Like this is, it felt like a very young, hip, like delicious food town. So then we ride and all of a sudden I'm like, hear this music. And it's this like all inclusive, I don't know what kind of a Christian church and they're like right in front of like where all the other like bars and stuff are but it's a Christian band like singing about Jesus I'm like hold on stop and I stopped I'm like crying I'm like this has been the greatest weekend of my life (laughs) I just can't get enough of how cute this is so thank you Texas I'm glad you had a good time I had a better time the heat is something I, I couldn't understand how it never cooled at night that was a little strange other than that though i think i think you're killing it everybody in texas um killing it is an understatement for the greatest thing that happened in the 24 summer olympics and that is the australian breakdancer i mean when i 
for, first it was, I follow my friend, comedian, a Miss Pat. And she was the first person who posted this. And I'm like, what? This cannot be real. I'm like, wait, there's breakdancing in the Olympics. And this woman, she's Australian. She's wearing a green suit. And it is so it's so bad. Like, the moves are so weird. So I'm like, I have to investigate. Like, how did she even get on the team? So she studied jazz and ballroom. She has been break dancing for years. Her husband got her into it. She's also a professor. And but the dancing, the break dancing is awful. It's literally looked like if I tried to be a break dancer, like she's just kind of rolling around. And then she's doing this little move that they're calling the kangaroo move because she is Australian. And it went completely viral. And um, Chloe from Saturday Night Live, who I absolutely love, Chloe is crazy as her Instagram. She was the, like the first person to get in the outfit and do the dance. And I'm laughing about it, just thinking about it. Like, it is insane. But I also think, like, how great. And she, I guess she's sort of now like defending it. And she said, look, like, I knew I was not going to win um, with these judges because there are such talented B girls, which is called the breakdancing girls. This is the first year ever to have this in the Summer Olympics. She's like, and part of it is creativity. So I just tried to be more creative with my moves. But just the fact that she's like Australian and older and it just, I just felt it was a Saturday Night Live sketch. I couldn't even believe it. And it made, it was my favorite part of the 24 Olympics. And I think it's great. And I hope she embraces it and loves it. She's our Hawk Tui girl. Enjoy your 15 minutes of fame. I love you. Um, the Olympic swimmers were drinking Coca-Cola to protect themselves from the bacteria in the Seine River. So they did have to do the race. Two of the people got really sick. But, of course, they're like, well, we don't know if it's because you ate, you know, inhaled some fecal matter while you're swimming in this river. People said it's been you know, disgusting for years. They can't believe that they ever even thought that someone could swim in it. Um, and I'm like, well, it kind of freaks me out that we're drinking Coke, that they're drinking Coca-Cola to protect themselves. But I guess there's something in Coca-Cola that can keep a virus from from you getting a virus. So I don't know if this is going to make people realize Coca-Cola isn't that bad for you. I don't know. I I have gotten more into Diet Coke lately. I used to love it. I used to have one every day for lunch. Then I took a big break from it. And now I'm kind of getting back into it. And I don't know. Now I feel like this makes me feel less guilty about it in case I swim in the ocean or something. Um, this is this is a bummer. This girl on our American team, Jordan Chiles, um, she, huh, she might lose her bronze medal. It's very confusing kind of what happened. She's very devastated. It's it's sad. But basically what happened is they said, let me read this to you. So the U.S. Gymnastics submitted a video evidence to the Court of Arbitration for the sport. And they claim proves that Jordan Chile's inquiry into her score at the Paris was submitted within the required time. So what happened is the inquiry had initially raised the score in the women's floor exercise final, earning her that bronze medal. But then the Romanian Olympic Committee protested, arguing that the inquiry was submitted four seconds too late. And then they ruled in favor of the Romanian, leading to her losing her medal. So hopefully now, this is the latest one, just this morning by People Magazine. Hopefully she will get it, but then I feel kind of bad for the Romanian girl who now thinks that she got it. And, I mean, it's not, they can't just give everybody a medal, but... She went off of social media and she was just like devastated this Jordan. And so that was like that was a sad part. Australian break dancer fun part. This is the sad part. And the people getting sick. Also, this Australian guy got arrested for trying to buy cocaine from a Paris teenager. So he got caught and he said, I'm sorry. But, you know, I I'm not a fan of cocaine or anything, but he he probably was done with his um competition and whatever it wasn't it wasn't a good look but he he is good looking okay Travis Scott was also arrested they had video of him being arrested he got in a fight with his own bodyguard a physical fight with his own bodyguard in this hotel so the police were called and they arrested him but they didn't keep him in prison and he recently was arrested for something else in um, Miami of course the ongoing lawsuits of the horrible thing that happened in Astroworld is still around.
but this doesn't seem like maybe it's that big of a deal. So I, but that's another thing that happened. Then we get to the finale, the final ceremonies. And Tom Cruise, like, went off where it was like he did one of his stunts and he high-fived a bunch of the Olympians. And then he gets on a motorcycle with the flag and he delivers it to our mayor, Karen Bass. And Simone Biles is also standing there to say, we're going to have the next Olympics. So that was cool. Um, also, In Touch is saying that he wants to, allegedly, In Touch has a scoop, that Tom Cruise wants to have another child and put his roots down in the UK. I don't know if this is true or not. He's 62 years old. and um, But, you know, he could totally have a whole other family. I mean... Didn't like Al Pacino or Robert De Niro each. I think they both just had a baby at 80. So whatever. I don't recommend it. But interesting story. Now, I am very, very excited about the 28 Olympics in Los Angeles. I don't mean to brag, but I'm going to. I am a native Angelino. Okay. I was born at St. Joseph's in Burbank. And I've lived here my whole life. And I told you before, I got to go to the 84 Olympics. So I think it's pretty cool for those people like me who went to the 84 Olympics, and now we're going to have the opportunity to go to the 28 Olympics. And I feel like these 28 Olympics is our reward as Los Angeles people that we did not leave L.A. We did not abandon it when we were suffering these last years of just not being run well and seeing a lot of disgusting stuff. But we stuck it out. We didn't move to Austin with everybody else from L.A. We did not join the caravan of Teslas from L.A. to Austin. We stayed here, and now we are going to benefit from it because now they, for the next four years, they have got to get our situation correct with the homeless and the mental health and the drug problems that we're having here in the streets. And hopefully those people will benefit, and we will, everyone will benefit and then you'll benefit because then you'll come here and it's it's just going to be fabulous. I mean, when I got home and I landed in LAX yesterday, I was like, the breeze, the weather, I was like, wow, these Olympics are going to be a lot better than the Paris ones because it's LA. And they're doing all these different uh, venues and I just think it's going to be fabulous. I am going to have a show. Okay, so get, get, I don't know when, but I'm going to have a show in LA during those two weeks. I just, that is what's going to happen. Hopefully it won't fall on like the gymnastics tickets or whatever. I'm going to attend it. I am going to be the face of the Olympics along with Snoop Dogg. So Snoop Dogg comes out and they perform right there and um, it just chills. I mean, I love that he was the hype man for the for the Olympics, but especially for the gymnastics team. I thought that was so cute. And then he comes up and joins his friend, Dr. Drew, and they basically just chills, you know, with their hit songs. It's just people my age and all ages. It's like when they did the Super Bowl. Just get get excited, people. I think it's going to be, I think we are going to have a lot to prove, and I think we're going to succeed. So if this is too much toxic positivity for you, I'm sorry, but I finally want to brag about being from LA. Okay, look how cute he is. All right, here we go. New movie out that I was not aware of this book. It's called um, It Ends With Us. And there's a lot of, a little controversy with it. It looks like it's very good. It was based on a hit, hit book. And I did, I kept, I looked at the trailer and I was like, what is this about? I was not aware of what the book was about. And it looked like this character, Blake Lively, falls in love with this guy. And then maybe there's this other guy that she's sort of thinking about. But then she goes back to the original guy and she has a baby. And you're like, okay, so this is just a beautiful love story. That is what I thought. And I'm like, what's the secret behind this book? So I'm like, I'm going to ruin it for myself. And I'm not really ruining it for you, though. So I look up Wikipedia. What is the plot of this book? Well, it ends with us, okay, if you don't want to know, but I think you should, because based on a book, is about this woman, it's her her life, about how her mom was a victim of domestic violence, and then she went and met this guy and got married and had a daughter, 
And she went back and forth with him a few times and finally was like, it ends with us, meaning it ends with myself and this daughter. Goodbye. She left him. And the whole thing was ending the cycle of domestic violence. And so the direct, so Blake Lively is the star and the producer. And the director and the co-star is Justin Baldoni, who says, I was so excited. Um, I hadn't even finished the book before I went and, you know, wanted to be part of making this a movie. And so the controversy is, it's kind of like um, when Olivia Wilde was doing her movie where she directed it and was star- had a part in it, which was um, um, Don't Worry About It, Darling. What, why the, the press wasn't, they weren't all together with the press. So people are like, what is the deal with this? And they believe that it's because these commercials and everything are more rom-com or romantic because the goal is to sell the tickets and they're not really sharing in the trailer what the movie is really about, which is the important lesson. And so Justin, who's the star opposite Blake, but also the director was like, you know, we always talk about being, um, you know, oh, we're just we're just Hollywood artists and we're not curing cancer. We're just inter- we're here just to entertain. And he goes, but I believe when I chose to jump on this project that this could actually having people see this movie, it could actually really make a difference all around for the future of people that suffer from this. And um, and so he, I guess, is upset of the way the movie's been cut and portrayed and um, promoted. And like I said, I had no idea that when I heard It Ends With Us and I saw Blake Lively in her dress that was originally worn by Britney Spears and there's flowers in the on the red carpet. And I, I really did. I just thought it was like a really, and I was like, this doesn't even look juicy from the trailer. I'm like, what's the juicy thing? What? How does it end with us? I just felt, I thought it, it ends with us, meaning we end up together. But no, she means she and her daughter end up together and away from this pattern of violence through generations. So I thought that was interesting, and I I um, definitely want to see the movie now. I know it can be hard to find a shampoo and conditioner combo that really caters to your hair type, but Way wants to give you the confidence to live your life your way, especially on your wash day. So whether your strands are fine, medium, or thick, Way has shampoo and conditioner that is your type. From volume and shine to deeply hydrating, which I definitely need now in these summer months, Way helps you find your way to good hair days every day. I love my detox shampoo and I love their hydrating conditioners. I have just felt like my hair has really had a little big bounce back using their products. I took the hair quiz. I found that my hair was dry and I got those Way products that really have helped nourish and hydrate my hair. Wash your way to healthier hair and shampoos and conditioners made just for you. Go to the way, T H E O U A I dot com and use code juicy for 15% off your entire purchase. That's the way, T H E O U A I dot com code juicy. Now, this is a sad but interesting story to tell. This influencer named Candace Miller is finally breaking her silence. This is very sad. But her real estate mogul husband, Brandon Miller, had ended his life, time on earth, um, himself. So this, it's, it's really a story. And it's so interesting because when this happens, and it happens with men, sometimes where it seems to have a real reason why they chose to do this. And this one was financial. And I just think that's so heartbreaking when anybody doesn't see that this can't be fixed or whatever. The devastation of like, if this, if I can't continue to provide this life for myself and my family, then I'm worth nothing. So basically they were this fabulous New York couple and with two cute kids, all attractive. He was in finance and real estate development. They had a $9 million house in New York. They had a Hamptons house they were renting. Um, they went on lavish trips. And she, her her influencing her, con, her content, um, she has since removed her, her social media. But what it was was a lot of luxury trips, fabulous parties, 
beautiful clothes, makeup. I bought this bag, unboxing, you know, this designer thing in which she gained a lot of followers because a lot of people just like to escape and see that kind of luxury and beauty aesthetic. So he, um, now the, the word is that she, that he did keep this, these financial troubles from her. One was they did sell the house for $9 million, but then they went to a rental for 47000 a month. That was 4,500 square feet. So they still had to come up with that payment. So it wasn't exactly a big step down. Um, and then he borrowed money from a very good longtime friend, like a short-term loan of a million dollars, and to finish this real estate development deal. And the friend, inquiring about his money, found out that the deal had already moved hands to somebody else. So there was no way in him finishing the project and this guy getting his $1 million back. So that long-term friendship ended, and this guy was out a million dollars, and Brandon Miller still was like, I've lost a best friend, and I still have to pay him. And it's just the catch-up, the catch-up. Now, this isn't, you know, this happened with uh, Bernie Madox and with the Ponzi scheme and his son ending his time on Earth, and it just is so awful. So then he said to his wife, according to friends, Everything's going to be fine. I, I'm i fixing it. This loan is getting taken care of. We're going to fix all this stuff. I can't go on the trip to, with you to the Amalfi Coast, but you go ahead. And so she went ahead, and she's staying at the $2,000 a night hotel in the Amalfi Coast, and that's when he um, took, ended it in his garage in his car. And um, I believe like a, an alarm went off, and that's how they found it. So I just was like, this is just, now I think this has happened throughout history. I mean, when we heard that people were jumping out of buildings when the stock market crashed in the 20s, in the 1920s, over 100 years ago. It's just so sad when it's something that is like a financial fixable thing. And it always will be fixable. I mean, he wasn't looking at prison time. He was just looking at an embarrassing situation of maybe maybe they wouldn't maybe they wouldn't have maybe they couldn't stay in the Hamptons maybe they couldn't ha- stay in New York I'm sure she's absolutely devastated I'm sure she's just like what the I need to rethink everything but maybe uh this could be a lesson to anybody that's hearing this story or you're aware of it that the appearances don't matter and please like Make it very aware to everybody and all your loved ones that whatever you, they're in not to hide things from people and not to think that this just can't be fixed and you know uh, it's just awful so that I wanted to share that thing now this I don't believe that this girl is doing this for real this comes from the sun and this beauty influencer says she uses poop as a face mask to prevent aging it got like 700,000 views where she's just like get ready with me while I shit on my own face I don't know what the fuck but she does it. Now, who who knows what the video was? I didn't want to look at it. I don't, I'm guessing this is fake. I'm guessing this is fake. And I think now people have to realize, and I've been taken a number of times, about thinking that somebody putting a video on, it's real. And it's almost like they're trolling themselves. Like they're, they're um, rage baiting or trying to get people upset or just trying to get the views. Even though people think you're disgusting, you, you did a poo-poo and like mixed it with like, mayonnaise and put it on your face like I don't she doesn't care because she got the views and whatever that's what I think maybe it was real but of course people and doctors waited and said there's no way this is good for anybody to have this I mean look what happened to the people swimming in the Paris River if in in fact they ingest anything like that it gets you completely sick so you certainly don't want it on your face so um, speaking of which so I talked about the Nara Smith that is the beautiful model that does the videos on Instagram, has 10 million followers. She has a beautiful husband named Lucky. They're stunning. They're real, legit models. Very young, like 25. They have three kids together. And her videos, you can't stop watching them because she's so stunning. And she, you know, gets in her beautiful outfit. She wears Chanel and this and that. And she says, today my toddlers stumbled into my room and said they were craving Cinnamon Toast Crunch cereal. I didn't feel like going to the store, so I made it from scratch. And then she shows you where it's lit, and she has every ingredient and how to make it. 
And I said, I believe that she has a team behind her. And I think this is a whole way to build a brand or just to get people, just to have a huge following on social media that can lead to other things because she is stunning and she does know her way around a kitchen whether people are helping her or not. People feel like she is trolling herself, that this was never meant to be taken seriously, that she was doing the trad wife thing and did it in a way, whether they do it themselves or with the team, but clearly she's not making Jolly Ranchers from scratch when there's no camera around, okay? Like, whatever. So now she she has never responded to any comments or anything, really keeping her um, persona clean for a marketing team to just make her a Martha Stewart of, her, of our time or whatever this plan might be in a much quicker um, amount of time. Side note, like uh, Meghan Markle, she supposedly had that jam, the American, I don't remember, it was such a long, weird name, but it was something about the orchards, American Orchard Farm Time, whatever. And she had this jam that she sent to some influencers. We haven't heard about the jam since. And the word on the street is that she's going to really try to build her Martha Stewart type brand. But to remind people about Martha Stewart, Martha Stewart was this, you know, former model and um, she was very attractive too, but she was like a mom, like raising her kids. And she was like, she made her own recipes, her own cooking and all this stuff before she ever had a show. And she was thinking of all these unique things like, why don't I stencil my own hardwood floors? Which at the time you're like, yeah, why don't I? And now you're like, why would you do that? But whatever. It was things. It was all these different crafts and things. And she built this whole empire. And so people are like, you can't expect to like skip all these steps forward, whether you're Meghan Markle or this girl, Nara Smith. But, you know, you can. You can skip a bunch of steps because you don't have to have a network give you your own TV show where you're on every day at 9 a.m. after the morning show. No, you can do this. So um, so finally she, she did speak up, but by, by, by not speaking up before and not really clapping back, she has this clean slate for anybody when they look to her to, hey, we want you to be our spokesperson for this cream or whatever. Though she does do a lot of products and a lot of brand um, partnerships on her Instagram and TikTok. But she just said, you know, I don't understand why people are hating on us, which that was about it. But she did finally kind of speak back, speak up because she did an interview. But she, what I think is good is that she's not like clapping back and she's kind of laughing. And anyway, you know, I, I'm seeing more of it. And I think it's kind of an interesting trend. And also I fell for it. I really thought this like chick was kind of real. And I saw all the parodies that people were doing. And now I just realize she's just, she was in on the joke all along. Okay, um, exciting weekend for me because my son made me aware that White Chicks was the number six trending movie on Netflix. Unless you've been under a rock and this is the first time you've listened to Juicy Scoop, I was part of the Juicy Scoop production. I was a contributing writer to the movie and also um, got to play the salesperson. That was a scene that I you know, wrote the first draft of along with all the other Wayne's brothers and other writers they had. And um, I love that that's such a hit movie. I love that it is still great today. And um, I love when Marlon Wayne's is asked about it. He says the women, the people who love the movie the most are the white women. So us parroting them is fine. And I'm like, well, you did have a white chick consultant. So I think we did it correct. But, of course, it was hilarious. I love that it stands today. I love that it has new um, people that just discovered it, you know, now, like young kids and everything. And there's a lot of really funny lines in there that I remember exactly who came up with it and how we thought of it. So maybe I'll do like a little special Patreon or something about if you're like a White Chicks fan, if that's something you want. Maybe I'll do it just like a little segment of, some of the scenes and how I remember how they came about because it is such a like a favorite movie. Um, but also, I mean, what a weekend for Heather McDonald. They this was sent to me, Peacock, which you can watch all the Real Housewives back seasons. The Real Housewives of Orange County. I am. I get that now. I don't know how this happened. I don't know if um, someone that works at Peacock loves me. 
and knows that maybe other people hate me and is I hope this person does not get fired because I'm sure now that I've brought it up, they probably will be like, how the hell did that happen? I don't know if it was a glitch in the matrix, but I am the face of this episode, <laughs> which is when Heather Dubrow had a groundbreaking party filmed to build her mansion, which then she sold with the Altman brothers from Million Dollar Listing or, um, you know, to, for $55 million or groundbreaking price. But this was, we all wrote these notes in it. And like, I was like, I hope this, you have wonderful memories in this house. And then we put it like in the ground and they had all this fun stuff. And uh, Tamara went on the, the um, riding bull and she broke her wrist and whatever. So anyway, we're featured on it and Peter's featured on it and Brandon's featured on it, like eating a donut. And the kids are so little and um, people are like, is this a sign? And I go, I don't know. Maybe it, it, maybe it is a sign. But I love Real Housewives of OC this season. One of the storylines was this gr new girl accusing Heather of calling the paparazzi to take photos of her at Disneyland. Now, um, because she denied it is why Tamara and everybody was jumping on it. And then this girl goes, I know that you did. I, I texted this person who's in charge of the paparazzi. And I'm like, did she call them herself? And that person said yes. And it wasn't a lot of evidence to it. But I thought it was so great because on, last, on the last episode, she brings it up to Terry. And Terry goes, I actually love when paparazzis get photos of me. So I would like that number. And I would like to call them more often so that I get to be in the news more often. And she laughs at him. And I totally believe it. And I thought that was the perfect way for just to like squash it because whether she has the number directly or her publicist does, or I, I truly believe there were other photos that I looked up and they're not super smiling. They're like talking and like not looking great. So I'm like, look, paparazzi goes to, um, I think it could be that she had them be called. And I also think it could be a random thing because, um, the paparazzi does go to Disneyland. They, they, I follow a couple accounts that are like celebs at Disneyland and stuff like that. They probably have a year-round pass, and it's worth it for them, to, for a paparazzi to go and walk around. And they probably have connections with some of the people working there. They're like, hey, I'm a tour guide. I've got the Kardashians coming today, so we'll be at the Haunted Mansion around 1. And then that guy probably takes some photos, gets some photos of them, makes some money. And gives a kickback to the person at Disneyland. Why would that be so unheard of that a person who works at Disneyland doesn't also have a friend who has a decent camera? I'm just saying. The point is, I thought Terry handled it great. And I thought it was funny. Also in the show, um, the main storyline that's really juicy is that Shannon Bedore, who is divorced, who dated this guy named John Jansen for four years. And... Um, and the last thing that happened, which was not on camera, is that she got intoxicated. She got behind the wheel after arguing with him at his house because she had left her phone at this A's restaurant. And so she gets in her car and she is intoxicated and she loses control of the car and it hits a house and she parks it down the street and she gets out and she starts walking her dog. She probably realized what the fuck I was, you know, drunk. Who knows? The cops come. She is cooperative. She's worked with the attorney. She's taken the uh, responsibility. She's done everything she's supposed to do. And thank God nobody was hurt. So they start filming after this incident. And she has to address it. She has to talk about it. She has to cry about it. She's embarrassed, right? She has since broken up with this guy, John Jansen. And then he starts dating Alexis Bellino, who was on several seasons of the show, but a few years ago. She was married to her husband at the time. They got divorced. She then, I believe, met somebody else who was engaged to that person. That engagement didn't go through. I believe she was on a below deck. And she meets this John Jansen at, a, at the Quiet Woman, and they hit it off, and they fall in love. And so they want her back on the show, obviously. And she's like, sure, why not? I'm in love. I call him Johnny J now. I don't call him John Jansen. I call him Johnny J. And um, and I don't like that the narrative that was put out there 
among the other women in talking about Shannon's relationship is that Shannon told these other women off camera, like on phone calls or whatever, the bad things that went on with their relationship. And it's and when you're when you're venting for to your girlfriend, you you say things, you know, maybe you're exaggerating, maybe you're telling the truth, but she vented about the relationship. And because they had that information, several of them did not have a good um, perception of Johnny J. And was like, good, I'm glad you broke up with him. And she's like, you know, he never paid for anything. I had to pay for when I was going to watch What Happens Live. I would pick up his extra. I'd pick up the plane ticket, whatever. Who knows what all that is about? And she complained. She said, I don't know if I could marry him because I don't know if he's wealthy enough. I need somebody that can, like, take care of me. And so that wasn't a great reflection on him. So then they get together. Um, and now she's on the show. And Alexis is like, I want people to like him. And I want people to know that he's not like that. He's barely drinking with me. And he's so lovely. And he's very generous. And she, it comes out that he had lent Shannon or given. Shannon said, he gave it to me. Shannon said, I needed um, 40000 for a facelift. And then I needed another thirty five for a loan. He, for for just living, okay? So then she, I guess, thought it was a gift, or she's claiming, he always assumed it was a loan. Once they broke up, and Alexis is like, oh, well, you're not, you're not cheap and a deadbeat. You gave her all this money. This is what I'm assuming. You need to get that money back. So he gets an attorney, and she gets sent with this letter, and she's like, oh my God, okay, I'll pay you the money. Like, I thought it was a gift because we were dating. I'll pay you the money, Let's, but let's not involve attorneys. And he, I'll give you the money, but you can never say a bad thing about me, and I can't say a bad thing about you. And at that point, I guess he said, I don't want to have any restrictions on what I can do or can't do if we're going to settle. I'd rather just go this way, get my money, and no one's going to restrict what I say or do because I believe he really, he's now, you know, now he's a public figure. He's with a public figure, his new girlfriend. She probably wants to stay on the show longer. The show is about all of their relationships together, including Shanna Bador and whatnot. So he doesn't want to be silenced. So then Shanna Bador goes to her dad and she's like, what should I do? And he's like, fight it, fight it to the end. So this is what we're watching. So then they go to dinner and then Tamara, who was her very good friend and Vicky, they were the Trace Amigas, were the Trace Amigas, da, da. And they did this routine and they had this show that was, you know, they would sell out the shows and they were going to go do all this stuff. And Tamara says, oh, Tamara says, I don't want to do the show anymore because it's called The Trace Amigas and it's about tequila shots and stuff. And I can't believe we have a show like in the next few weeks after this news of Shannon getting in this accident and everything. And they say, you're you're out, Tamara. We're just going to be the dose of me ghosts. So now we see them filming. And meanwhile, Tamara has become close to Alexis and Johnny J. And they go to dinner. And it, it was not, we saw the scene. Now, this is for the cameras. We know Tamara is a vet. She knows what the producers want. She knows what the people at home, whether they say they want it or not, she knows what they want. And she it goes on the offensive because Shannon gets there and she orders um, a tequila, uh, no, sorry, a vodka and soda. And she just starts going off on her, saying you're an alcoholic, like calling her out in front of all these people, in front of the cameras, in front of the world. You're an alcoholic. When you call me, you're drunk. And Shannon's like, why are you doing this? You've been on this path of my alcoholism for 10 years. And she's like, because you have. You've been an alcoholic for 10 years. You call me at night. You never ask about me. And I'm just sick of it. And you say you say these things about how awful John Jansen was to you. And I don't believe it because Alexis says it's different. And then Alexis brings up the receipts of the wire transfers and all this stuff. And that, it, in her opinion, it was, in fact, a loan. And they're at this dinner and everybody's like, um, so that's the show. And it turns out, even though Shannon has struggled and all this stuff, the overwhelming response is very pro-Shannon, very anti um the behavior that Tamara displayed and they don't really care if Tamara had to stay up late nights and hear exaggerations or untruths. They don't care that 
Tamara thought she was doing the right thing by trying to kill the Trace Amigos. They are like, Shannon does not deserve to have another lawsuit coming out of this camp. And she does not deserve to be suffering like this when she is a single mom. She isn't dating anyone. She's trying to do herself better. And it's just really interesting when, you know, kind of like with the Vanderpump, where I think you're in it and you're filming it and you think you're displaying your side of it. And you're like, I think when this airs, Lala and Sheena, people are going to see their side and they're going to be tired of Ariana. And the same thing happened. It was like, no, we're team Ariana. It can be, it could be editing, but it also can just be, you just, you miss, you just don't perceive right how these shows affect the audience that's listening that's predominantly women and we've all been through some shit and so I think that's really what it is and I think that's what is very interesting about the show support for today's juicy scoop comes from honey love honey love has revolutionized the wireless bra game their bras feature supportive bonding that eliminates the need for uncomfortable wires and unnecessary bulk and believe me in the summer heat you deserve a bra that's lightweight and comfortable without sacrificing support for a limited time only you can get honey love on sale get 20 percent off your entire order with our exclusive link honeylove.com slash juicy. One thing that I just love about Honey Love is I always hate that bra bulging in the back that just squirts a fat that around your bra. Well, Honey Love's bras are designed with back smoothing fabric to prevent the bra bulge. I absolutely love it. Honey Love is not just supporting women. It's empowering women. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash juicy. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off. Honeylove.com slash juicy to find your perfect fit. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Elevate your comfort, elevate your style with bras that empower your lifestyle of flexibility. Okay, now Real Housewives of New Jersey. They had this weird kind of reunion. They put the two girl, two groups of women in two different rooms and they watched the last episode, which we covered last week, which was they're at a, at the same restaurant they're eating. And it's all about how Teresa feels that her new husband, Louie, has been attacked and people try to burst her love bubble. And it's like, why are you in a bubble, though? Why Why do you want it? What, you want to put your head in the sand, be in a bubble? Yeah, the bu- this is real life now. And he had several exes. Exes came forward. Exes reached out to other women and on the cast and people and was like, um, you're, you should you should know what your girlfriend, Teresa, is getting involved with. This guy is bad news, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to give you the information. She always perceived it as my castmates that interacted with these exes of Louis are my enemies, and therefore I hate them, and therefore they tried to ruin my life by sharing stuff from his past. You're going on a reality show. It's going to come out. I just don't know why. There, more people aren't taking it as maybe I talked to them because I was like, what are you going to say? You know, how bad is it? Maybe after I talked to them, I realized it wasn't as bad. And that's why I never brought it up on camera or anybody else. I think that's so the, the interesting thing about it. But Louis doesn't help himself because Louis and, and Teresa have a podcast. And on their last episode that just came out a few days ago, they someone cut a clip from the show that was put online. I don't think they cut this clip. I don't think this would be the clip they cut. I think someone watched it, cut their own clip, and put it out. And it's him talking to Teresa, and he's saying, like, I love that the girls, her daughters, you know, it's like, do it, live free, wear that thong, dance on a table at the club, show a little leg. You know, they all had thongs on in Greece, your daughters, and they looked hot. They looked great. I'm paraphrasing, par- paraphrasing. But that was it. And the fans of Bravo, whether they love or hate Teresa, all basically agreed this was really red flag behavior. Now, I don't know if he's going to try to say, I was saying, you know, I was agreeing with what Teresa had said in the past. Maybe Teresa had told the girls, wear a thong, dance on tables. I wish I didn't live such a conservative life in my 20s. Go have fun. And he was just like co-signing on it. But it was coming out of his mouth and people perceived it as like, Those were the examples you used. You didn't say, hey, I tell the girls, go travel Europe on your own. 
go, you know, take that funky job. Choose the major that you, it maybe isn't the guarantee. That's what he could have said to say, live your life and take the risk that I didn't take. But they since have taken down the video or cut out that part of, of this show. That's what I've heard. Page six picked it up. They talked about it. Everyone talked about it. We see we come to the end of the show. And um, they're like, well, I guess this is it, you know, so on one. So this was so on one side, it was Margaret, Melissa, um, Danielle and um, Jen Fessler. And this and yeah. And this other girl. Um, what is her name? Um, Rachel Fuda. OK, so they're all. And at the very end, Rachel Fuda goes and you guys, I'm pregnant. And then People Magazine shared the photo. She's pregnant with her third child with her husband. And she has a stepson who she's adopted. And I have to say, the way the girls, those girls that was in that room, in the other room, it was Jennifer, Aiden, Jackie, Teresa, and Dolores. The girls that got that news, Melissa, Margaret, Danielle, Jen Fessler, and and then Rachel gave the news. I really felt that was a really joyous, honest moment where you're truly happy for your friend you're truly surprised and so after seeing that kind of the thought is why can't we have them those girls and then maybe two or three new housewives I don't know you know um because of all the the weird darkness but that the podcast and everything is not was not good for Teresa and Louie, and that she just wants to say, why would you say anything about him? Da, 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 da. This is hurting my family. And it's like, you know, I, I don't know what to say to all of it, but that's that's the juice. And that's why we're talking about it. And I don't know what's going to happen with New Jersey, but that is what I think would totally work. And maybe just give her something else or put her on pause. She's doing villains. Teresa, I don't know. Um, we'll see what happens with that. But it seems like there's been more and more coming out that made that would make any woman nervous about their friend who's with this guy that has so many disgruntled exes and stories. And, you know, he did this. He went on this camp that came out. That was the warrior video where he's saying very nice things to an ex saying, I'm going to be better and all this. There is an alleged letter that he wrote about himself to get into the How to Make You a Better Man camp that it admits a lot of very negative things about himself to get himself in. We don't know if that's all true. We don't know if that was just to get him into the camp. The other person and someone else would say, well, at least he was trying to better himself and it just didn't work out with that woman, but he still benefited from this warrior camp. Those videos got out and every people talk and it's just such a large audience now that's online and giving opinions, whether it's like me on a podcast or whatever. And yeah, they can't necessarily get off of social media either they make a biz they make their living being on it as well and putting their daughters on it and selling products and sharing their vacations and doing all that so it's a mess meanwhile Jax a Vanderpump rules he posted this cameo and saying hey you know um, if you'd like a cameo for me that's great and the money I make from Cameo goes to this cancer research that his dad had passed from that kind of cancer. Brittany, they've been separated for over five months. They are now filming The Valley. She posted that video and said, wrote on it, Jax real, just realized Jax had this on his Cameo and it's disgusting because he hadn't, hasn't donated a dime for FYI at Cameo. People grabbed that. She took it down within an hour. It could be that he was giving the money back three years ago, and this was just part of his advertisement on his cameo. She obviously realized it doesn't make her look really good, and it just it just it makes us realize that these two are not in a good place. That you would do that to your husband because if you're raising your kid together, why would you call him out like that? Don't you want him to bring in money as well? Maybe take him to the side and be like, I just noticed that. I don't remember you giving any money. Can you not? Some, somebody else is going to get it. It tells me that they're not communicating at all. Um, or maybe someone was, maybe she wasn't thinking. Maybe she, whatever, did it late at night. I don't know. So there's a story there. Meanwhile, um, Vanderpump's Stasi, who has always been really well liked, except when she 
was canceled and kicked off the show, which that whole story you can look up. She is back. She, you know, she'd lost her book deal during that 2020 time. She got another book. She had another baby. She, you know, got married. She and her husband have now two kids. She continues with her podcast and she's just very well liked. She's, you know, very pretty. And she didn't let this, that awful time in her life stop her. And she has a show on Hulu coming out that's a comedy docu-series about her life being funny, I guess, and some funny friends. And um, so who knows? Who are these other people that are going to be in her life? I assume she's kind of making her own Vanderpump Rules or her own Valley with people in her life about her life, which if Vanderpump Rules doesn't come back, maybe Stassi and, and – um, Maybe La- I mean, maybe Lala and Sheena can join her or bounce around or whatever. Who knows? But um, people are very excited for that. And she's going to make a like one-time appearance and visit the villa, which is continuing. I Like I said, I had not heard a lot of buzz about the Hulu show Villa, which is Lisa Vanderpump has a staff helping people in like a vacation fancy villa hotel, like a boutique hotel situation or whatever. And she's going to go and be on that. It's like a below the deck for a hotel, which is what they said is going to basically be Dorinda's show, too. But on Hulu, which I feel like Hulu, you know, is is grabbing a lot of shows that would normally had been would be on Bravo. There is the um, new Hulu show about the Mormon TikTok girls. They got their own show and uh, people have seen those screeners and they said it is very juicy and good. They're young. They're beautiful. And it's a unique lifestyle that we have not seen before. And it's a new formula that we haven't seen before. So very interesting. Okay, Taylor Swift ends the Kanye West's number one streak on the Billboard chart. So she's killing it. She's gone past him. And I love it when something like this happens. The comments are like, oh, my God, Taylor, let it go. Let it go. Like, she's not doing anything. She's merely just succeeding. And, you know, I... We, we should never forget what he did to her when he jumped up on stage and grabbed her award from her. And I don't think she'll ever forget it. And as women, that should be a moment that sticks in our mind from this generation. And as like, that was not okay, not cool. And how she has proceeded. And as much as she wants, she can bring it up as much as she wants. She can write as many songs about it in code or whatever. Boy, talk about, you know, success being the greatest revenge. And then also um, Ed Kelsey, who is Travis Kelsey's dad, he said um, he doesn't like that Kanye, in fact, has included a lyric about Taylor Swift and his son. It's just like a little it's just like a throwaway line. But he's like he obviously has mental illness. And but he knows what he's doing, too, because I wouldn't even know that he wrote a song about Taylor Swift unless he. You know, by putting that in there, then then people comment on it. And so people always wonder if this stuff is like they're strategically mentioning each other to get press about it. Probably, but it's probably still both on their minds. And they're probably like, why not throw it in there? And I mean, he knows what gets people talking. And she is the biggest um, performing artist right now with the biggest crowds and everything. So why not talk about it? Um this can't be good if um, if Travis has a Tesla because Tesla is selling karaoke mics for its cars. So um, this also can't be good for my husband, Peter, because I definitely want the karaoke mics. We have two Teslas and I want to try it, if anything, just to have you guys <laughs> see me sing in the backseat. Um, but we all know that Travis likes to do karaoke. I told you it's a fear of mine that he will take this singing career to the next level and that'll really kill it for him and Taylor. But, um, you know, all of our biggest fears are coming true. People are going to be karaoke in your car. Now, I was once in a Uber and it wasn't a Tesla. It was just like a like a big, like, you know, SUV kind of thing. And the guy had like all the bells and whistles. You know how sometimes you go in an Uber and they actually still have like the mints and the waters and the stuff. And he was like, I have karaoke if you guys want. Like, <laughs> and we we're like, oh my God, it's kind of fun. And we like did a song. And so I, they probably got the idea from that. But like, if you're going to, you know, it's like they don't need to have those 
videos when we used to watch like, oh, your kids can watch a DVD, a a long car ride. Now everybody has their own iPad. So why not do something together and truly do carpool karaoke? Um, Yeah, just like, um, what's his name? James Corden. He's probably pissed about this. Probably like, Elon Musk stole my idea. Um, Ugh. More on the astronauts that are stuck in space. So they, this couple, they're not a couple. They're, she's a female, he's a male, and they're married to other people at home. And they're supposed to be eight days. Now they're saying they're not going to get home till maybe like February of 2025. I've talked about how it's my biggest nightmare. They say it's, it's big. There is room to do other things. And they and the woman's husband said, she's fine. She's in her happy place. She loves it. She she just loves looking down on the blue earth. And she, they have plenty of food and water. They have plenty of things to do. They have the internet. We can FaceTime them. They are fine. And the husband, the I mean, the uh, male astronaut's family is the same. They're like, he's fine. He says, and I'm like, I wonder, like, I don't know. I wonder if, the people at home like aren't necessarily missing them. But I still think I don't care what the people would tell me. And maybe they're smart enough to know that they shouldn't worry. But I would be worried. I would be worried. Now, I mean, we've all been just stuck in an airport for a few hours with the delay. I panicked so much being stuck in that airport that I got an Uber and drove to Austin. But so this is why I'm not an astronaut. and I never want to be one. But I'm I'm going to be following this this case like I and then I definitely, I hope they definitely do a tell, at least a podcast. Tell me what went on. But I guess they're just like, no, it's not a problem. We're totally fine. Like, we're, we're happy the trip lasted this long. I don't know. I don't know if they don't have kids or what, but they're, they, they are not complaining or freaking out. There is a new thing in the dating world called hood fishing. It's what my parents used to call geographically undesirable, which means... The person that you are thinking about dating just lives too freaking far away. And New York City, on the apps, people will say, just like a catfish, maybe they, you know, use a different photo or lie about their age or whatever. They say, um, oh, I live in the city. And then once they start talking to them and liking them, then they want to make a date. And then the person reveals like, well, actually, I live in Long Island or whatever. And it's an hour train ride. And then they're like, well, why did... You basically lied so that I would think that you lived near me. And so, you know, these kids, these kids trying to date just can't catch a break. Um, but you can also, this is kind of fun. There is a life-size Polly Pocket house and it's coming to an Airbnb. But it bring, it's like a slumber party thing. Very cute for like a girl's weekend, a bachelorette party, whatever. I think this kind of stuff is really fun. Like, going to more experienced, nostalgic type of places. Um, Like I mentioned earlier, the airport that's like takes the airport hotel that takes you like to the 1960s going on an airplane experience back in the day. I would love to go to more weekend resorts that have a back in time experience. Now, I kind of get that when I go to Palm Springs or, you know, where I live, La Quinta, there's a lot of like that kind of mid-century 1960s vibe but it might be really fun to like more people to explore this or be like you're in a barbie dream house or a poly pocket i think that's like i think that's going to be a new thing also i saw this on people magazine you can get this two-story tiny home with six bedrooms and a side deck for only eighty thousand dollars and it's one of those tiny homes but it seriously looks like an $8 million home that you would see on Selling Sunset. I mean, it looks exactly the same, except it's $80,000. And I just think, like, this stuff's, like, amazing. And why aren't more people buying these? And and just, I don't know. It's just very, it's like, why why wouldn't you get this for $80,000? Like, where do I get this for $80,000? Can it fit in my backyard? That's incredible. So there it's an article in People Magazine about celebrities who have opened up about celibacy. Now, they just said, you know, I've taken six months off. I've taken a year off. I've been, oh, my God, I'm basically a virgin now. It's been so long. And they're just really being honest about I'm just not in a relationship and I don't care how long it goes. Drew Barrymore has said it. She's like, I've been I've been a, I have been celibate since 
I became a single mom. And I just, I don't even do it. The dating is so scary. Who should I date? Which kind of culotte should I wear? I don't know. I find it, I kind of find it interesting, but I also find it great that uh, people are so honest about it because I would think, but you know, everyone always wants to think there's something weird if you don't have sex. Well, this girl said she's a 33-year-old virgin who is not religious, and this is why she didn't have sex. So she goes on to say, I'm 33, and I just, um, I just haven't been in a relationship, and I, you know, but now I'm kind of ready to. So I read the article, and it turns out, sadly, her dad died when she was like 18, but she inherited a lot of money. And for the last like 12 years, she's just been traveling the world, having the time of her life and staying in beautiful places. And so then there were the comments were like, well, maybe I'd like to date her. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's very cute, but she said it wasn't a religious thing. It was just something that she just wasn't interested in and never really pursued. And now she's also being honest about it. And I thought that that was you know, based based on my book, if you're not aware, I've written a book called You'll Never Blue Ball in This Town Again. And it is a New York Times bestseller. And it is about how I found myself still 27 and a virgin. And it wasn't a religious thing. It was a little bit in that, like my mom, you know, was we were Catholic and it was like, you should be a good Catholic and you shouldn't have sex before you're married because God forbid you get pregnant and then you're stuck and da da da. But after a certain point, it wasn't that. It was just like I couldn't find a boyfriend. And when I would I th- would kind of like a guy, then I'd be like, well, I want to make sure this is my boyfriend because I've waited this long. So I don't want to just like have sex with this guy and never hear from him again. But then those people were so used to not waiting more than two or three dates that then by the third date of not me not having sex with them, they just figured I didn't like them. And then they dumped me. And I'd be like, what happened? And that was basically, the book is really funny stories of all of that and me like trying to also make it as a comedian. I, and I was not out as a virgin as a comedian. I'd have jokes about like funny jokes that I'd come up with based on like my friends and stuff. So it would sound like I was somewhat promiscuous on stage almost. And um, because it was so embarrassing. So I I love the honesty. I think people need to be more honest. And, you know, it is hard to to meet and date and it you know it is hard to i see why if people can just get their own tiny home and not have to deal with these weirdos and not have to travel two hours to meet someone how it just all of a sudden you wake up and you're you know not having sex um this guy did get married and to his wife and then a five-year-old daughter and then the wife is like i'm dying to go on a european trip and then he says this is and then he's like well then our, my mother-in-law just like invited herself, which I wasn't really thrilled about. And the wife booked the hotel and in which she was paying for, and they had two queen beds. So I guess he and the wife would sleep in one bed, not very romantic, and the grandma, mother-in-law, and the five-year-old sleep in another bed. And he said, I couldn't take it anymore. This was like a TikTok or a Reddit or something. And he's like, I couldn't take it anymore because she was, the mother-in-law was using all my wife's expensive products and um, and then the final straw was she used the tooth our toothpaste and just the thought of her toothbrush getting that close to my toothpaste. I finally just said, I'm out of here. This isn't a fun trip for me. And he booked his flight home and was like, goodbye. And then now the woman's screaming at him and furious and everything. And I thought, you know, the thing with that is I think that you just really have to be more vocal about your in-laws and situations like that and a trip and how much time it, it's one thing to visit an in-law and it's another to be like not only staying at their house but in their their bedroom I think what it really comes down to is you really have to be more vocal about your in-laws I know people are always like my mother-in-law my mother my husband did. um you know a video recently came up and it was Bethany Frankel reliving a time when she was married and she was you know, being really raw about the time. And I think she was mourning that loss of the fact that she was a really busy mom, which I talked about when her daughter was young and she had a talk show and this and that. But also she realized like this marriage isn't working out with the husband. And she said that his parents, who to this day, she says, have a relationship with their daughter and they, you know, they seem like they're good people. But I just think they didn't realize 
that it wasn't working out how much time that they were in her space. So she said, you know, not only would they come and visit like once a month, then two weekends out of the, so three weekends they'd spend with her. One weekend they would come to her house and stay like a week. And then the, and then there'd be two weekends a month that she would have to pack up everything with her husband at the time, Jason Hoppy, and the baby and go visit them and stay at their house. And while she's doing this talk show and everything, and I think now she's just was in, unpacking. She did stop talking about it. I think maybe it was a legal reason, but this was kind of an interesting video that like went, that was sent to me. And she's just kind of crying about it. And she was just like, and the comments were, were like, look, they probably were really well-meaning and this was maybe going to be their own grandchild and they were so excited. But, and they think that they're being great hosts when you come. But as like a grown woman, you just want like your own space and you want your own, you know, and, it, and no matter how nice your in-laws are, you need to know that your parents are not your partner's parents. They're not. And some people thought it was really weird that we bought a house next door to my parents. And it was like right out of Everyone Loves Raymond. But it really wasn't because they were like, really? You really want to live next to us? They never stopped by unannounced, my parents. My mom would be like, call me on a Monday and be like, on Wednesday, would you like to come over for dinner? And I was always like, yeah, because she's like a really good cook and stuff. They never... Um, we're just like, we just want to see the baby or whatever. It was more convenient for me. I'd be like, hey, can you know, can you watch Brandon or whatever for a couple hours? Oh, okay. Or and sometimes they'd be like, no, we're too tired. Like we're older and we're tired. We don't want go get a sitter. Like, and sometimes that would happen. And I just feel like people need to like communicate more with their in-laws early on. And I almost think that's why like um like when you have like those pre-marriage classes that sometimes church is required, that should be a real thing that you talk about. Like, you know, how off earthquake, earthquake. Okay. Huh. Looks like we got our clip, Rebecca. All right. The question is, do we want to keep going? Yes! <laughs> We're keeping all this in. Oh, 100%. Okay, well, let's wrap this up. We're going to wrap it up, okay? Know your mother-in-law plan before you get married and know your earthquake plan if you live in earthquake country. And that's get under the table and... Um, and we're fine. We're fine. Um, Brandon's fine. He's here. Rebecca's fine. The editor. Whew, my heart's beating. And we love you. Take care. I hope that they, I hope California is still here for the 2028 Olympics. Thanks. Bye. Support for today's Juicy Scoop comes from Honey Love. Honey Love has revolutionized the wireless bra game. One thing that I just love about Honey Love is I always hate that bra bulging in the back that just squirts a fat that around your bra. Well, Honey Love's bras are designed with back smoothing fabric to prevent the bra bulge. I absolutely love it. Honey Love is not just supporting women. It's empowering women. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash juicy. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash juicy to find your perfect fit.